Oh, there I am. <laughs> I thought I was live about five minutes ago. Hi, Toodley. How are you, Laura? I thought I was live. Oh, Bertie. I thought I was live about five minutes ago when I was talking to myself, as you've often seen me do with these things since I do them so rarely. Um, you know, I'm not a technical whiz. Oh, there you are. Becky Smith, Kathy, Muriel. Yes. Tell me where you're from. Chris, Chris Hanagram. Yes, I haven't seen him in so long. Oh, you don't have sound? Okay, let me see. Uh, what? Maybe you need to turn your sound. Do you guys have sound? Does anybody have sound? Can you give me a yes or a no? Okay, hi. I think I should have sound. It looks like my sound's on. Can somebody give me a, a, a sound is on, thank you. All right, um, Laura, you're gonna have to unmute yourself. Okay. Argentina, wonderful, wonderful. Oh my goodness, Pennington, New Jersey. That's close. That's like my stomping grounds. Hi. Oh my goodness. Yay, Maury is here from Iran. Yes. What time is it there? I always ask you the same thing. Saudi Arabia. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for coming on. You know, I think all I want to do is talk. I don't want to work or show you anything. I just want to say hi. It's been so long since we've been on. Hi, Maury. Yeah. Say hello to everybody. Carol, tell everybody where you're from. 2008. I don't know what that means, but Lisa, there you are. Okay. Well, I want it. I want to thank everybody for coming on. Honestly, um, it's been so long since I did this that I'm totally disorganized, but that's kind of the way I roll, as you know. Um, I just kind of work by the seat of my pants. Uh, Laura, you have to turn your, so your sound on. Um, anyway, maybe somebody can text her or message her. Um, yeah, so I wanted to talk to you today about a few things. First of all, I wanted to know how you're all faring in this uh, continuing, uh, I don't know, morph of the pandemic. Um, some of, we are, some of you are locked down real tight. All my Australian friends in certain places are really, um, you know, a little bit trapped. And um, here in New Jersey, it, it's pretty open right now. Although they are finding that in some of the schools, I mean, people have the right right now to wear a mask, not wear a mask, not get vaxxed, what have you. All I know is they're saying that in the schools that opened nearby, um, there's quite a few outbreaks and they might have to close it again. So I don't know what that's going to bring us, but, um, here we are now. And so I'm grateful for that. And I'm grateful for being able to get outside. We're having absolutely beautiful weather here. And, um, but I don't want to take up all your time, uh, talking about that. I did want to show you, um, and, and if you get a piece of paper or you just want to watch, what have you, um, I'll try to save the playback, but I'm not sure, uh, what IG will allow me to do anymore. Cause I haven't done this in a really long time. Um, yeah, Carol, you're thankful where you live. Are you in down South or I don't know. But anyway, um, I'm gonna try to move this down. I'm gonna I'm gonna hold up that I have some of these um, basics, and I don't know if they're backwards for you or not. But I do have a new phone, which I'm learning. Um, okay, so this is um, a yellow ochre, or it's called yellow oxide in this, but it's essentially yellow ochred. Okay, um, and then I have um, a Payne's gray. And this particular brand of Payne's Gray leans more toward black than blue, um, but I'm gonna use that as my black. <clears throat> and then I have 
the white, okay? Because if you mix black and white with anything, you're gonna get a lot more uh, tints and shades. Um, and this is a, a bright red. It's called Cadmium Red Light Hue. It almost looks like an orange, okay? So those are the colors that I'm using. Um, Thanks, Maury. <laughs> I'm trying to pay attention here. Um, well, only my hairdresser knows. Uh, she's good. But anyway, um, yeah, so I kind of squirted all these things out. I'm going to kind of hold them up and hope they don't run. All right. And this is just on a piece of paper um, before I, I go down on here. And um, this palette, um, it's really interesting because I learned it. I'm not sure how I learned it. I just started using it and finding out that it was fabulous. And then I um, went in a few years ago to Nicholas Wilton's um, like 12 week class um, because as a teacher, I really wanted to put myself through paces again and, and regroup and what have you because often uh, when you're, you're teaching and you're painting at the same time, of course, there's two different voices speaking in your head so you don't always paint freely because you're overthinking. And so uh, it was good to just be taught. But um, one of the mixes that he used was this one, except it was used, he used a crimson and it made so many beautiful colors. And then just recently I learned that there's, there was an artist, Zorn, I'm not sure if he was Dutch or what, but he only used these colors and he painted mostly realism, landscapes and portraits, but he only used these colors. And uh, the grays that he mixed actually appeared as blues next to these warm tones. So um, that was um, that was established a very long time ago, but I didn't know. So if you want to research Zorn, Z-O-R-N, um, you know, I thought, you know, I made this discovery, then I thought, oh, Nick made the discovery, and then I thought this one, and and it goes back. It's just like everything old is new again. So um, you can check that out. Um, okay, so I'm gonna um, show you what is on my palette now. And I, I added some um, of this Liquitex uh, acrylic medium. Okay, this will extend the um, the paint so you can stretch it further if you use a lot of it it will thin it but there's better mediums for doing that so that you can make a glaze um so i i won't be able to get in too much to glazes today or to color comparisons which is something that um i have coming up in in a class that i'm slowly but surely making but you can you can start to really see how you can use a few colors uh, in the beginning, and then um, use glazes um, or touches of, of other colors, outliers, I would call them, um, to make a really beautiful, cohesive uh, piece of work and that you can really focus on the design and all the other things that you need to think about when you're painting rather than, you know, am I just am I, I'm making a mix mess, um, which I do a lot of. I, I do that all the time because that's how I find out. So I allow myself to make you know, yakky paintings. <laughs> I do them often. I may not post them, but I make them. Let me tell you, I'm lots of monsters. So don't worry about making monsters. Just, just learn from it. So, all right. So I'm going to show you the palette. All right. Now give me a minute because I'm going to have to see how this focuses in. So I think I have to bend this way down like this. Okay. Now I have to get down here and do my usual look up thing. Okay. I think you can see it. So what you're seeing is um, over here, you're seeing the yellow ochre or yellow juan. You're seeing the red, the cad red light. You're seeing the um, Payne's gray. And this is a big pile of white. What you're seeing next to these, okay, is this, okay, is this Liquitex medium. And this is a satin gel. I like satin gel because it's not too shiny. 
All right, and that's that's kind of what it's like. Um, it's kind of gunky, but it's not too shiny, and it's not dull. So there you have it. I don't always like my art to be shiny. I, I have had people uh, buy my art and say, you know, uh, it, th there's a glare on it and it's, it's a canvas. And I realized that I might have fixed it with a gloss medium or I might have used a brand of paint that is shiny. So what I wanted to show you is just, you can just mix these in. They aren't gonna change the color at all. What they are is they're just gonna extend it. All right, so you're just getting more, more for less. Okay, that's it. And you can make a really big pile of stuff if you're painting a big painting with this. And I'm using a knife because when I use my brushes, it gets really mucky. And with a knife, uh, which I'm not really a great palette knife artist, although I'd really like to learn, um, you know, I can clean it off and I can keep the color clean. So you might want to use a palette knife if, if you don't use it normally, that you use it to mix your colors with because you can wipe them off and then go into the next color clean. All right, so that's that. So you just mix it up real good. And now I have more of that color. I can add more or less medium and then you can try it out and see you know, how it works for you. It can make um, uh, a thinner paint, something that might be a, a, a bit of flowier paint, uh, thicker, okay? Uh, and it will extend paint in general. So, and I don't know if you can see, can you see, you can see that, I think, okay? So I'm gonna mix it with this. It's not going to make it white, okay? It, it It's just like more binder per se, all right? It's not gonna change the color at all. So it is very, very cool, and I, I think it's worth investing in. Um, I, I never used to use it, but I do find that it really, it keep, and it keeps my paint wet a little bit longer, okay? So again, I'm gonna wipe this off. I'm getting paint all over myself. Uh, should've wore gloves. I should've got a manicure. Why do they call them manicures? Why don't they call them woman cures? I don't know, that's something that we need to discuss. But anyway, um, maybe men used to do it, I don't know. Manicures, Manny petty I don't know. Anyway, that's that's not neither here nor there. So uh, what I wanna do is I wanna show you all these colors with just a little bit of white added to them, okay? So you can go many, many different degrees. Um, so that gives you a really nice pale, warm golden yellow. All right. And I'm, I'm cleaning my knife off and I'm gonna put some white in here, which will give you a really nice peach, just mixed with white. And you can do varying degrees of this, of course. So now we have two colors of each of these already, or two tones. And then when you mix it with the paint gray, I really like that because it, it kind of makes a little bit more of the blue come out. It depends on the brand of paint gray that you're using. Um, but here you get um, what I think is a nice blue. So that's why I like using it uh, rather than the black uh, when I'm using this particular palette because it can give me a nice cool against these warms, all right? Now, if I use the Payne's Gray as my, as my black per se, even if you used black and you mix it with yellow, you're gonna get a, you know, a green color. You're gonna get varieties of greens, all right? That's a really nice khaki green. If I add, I gotta wipe it off. I don't like to wipe off. I, I'm a messy painter, I just get it all in there. And if I add white to that, then I'm gonna get a really, really totally white thing because I didn't add enough. Um, so I gotta add more yellow. But then I'm gonna get a, a, a really nice, 
light green, olivey blue green. Okay. And we had the olive when I just added this with a little bit of that. Okay. We had that, that nice olive. And that's why I like the extender because I'm going to need more paint real quick, especially if you're going to be working on a larger painting. So there you can see some variations in that. Um, if I add the paints gray, this is interesting to this red, I get like a real brown color or almost a black, just depending on what the ratio is. I got to squirt a little bit more out there. I hope you all can see this. I don't think you'll have to take notes because it's fairly, fairly simple and, and really, um, you know, um, it, it, it's fairly practical. Um, so if I take some of this and I mix it in here, then like I said, I start to get this, it's almost like, why do I even need a burnt sienna? Because, I mean, that's a gorgeous burnt sienna, isn't it? And I love burnt sienna next to, next to blues. I really do. So the more of this I use, the darker the um, brown or burnt sienna color. So you can get a lot, a lot of tones with that too. All right. And any color that's we, you've already seen that mixed with all those colors, you're going to get a lot. So... Um, we have a lot to work with. And it's just a matter of how much black, how much white, and how much of each color you add with each color. Now, if I wanna mix them all together, I can get, I can get a, a colorful neutral. Um, but it's gonna to amount to that. So I really could harmonize my color by just putting that in with each one. Because at that point, they'll all be sharing what I call the same blood. Okay, they'll all have a little bit of each other in the mix. So depending on, you know, the dominant pigment that I put into this, and then I mix this with white, I'm going to get some really um, interesting neutrals, which look very, very muddy and very much like that, except it might have a warmer tone to it. But this color... This is, I think this is beautiful. And it's a little bit more green because of, because I mixed it with the um, Payne's Gray. But if you take the white and put it in there, then you start to get some really nice beiges and neutrals and stuff. So you've got a lot of nice colors to work with. And, and depending on what color is dominant, you can see when the red comes to the top, you can sometimes see maybe over here when the blue comes to the top, um, Again, that affects what your grayed down color will look like. So I don't know if you can see all of these. I think you can. Okay. So we got a lot of color here to work with. Um, I'm going to turn this back up. I'm running out of paper towels and, and stuff. So... The medium stretches the paint. If I hadn't added the medium to it, I would have been able to, I would have had to, you know, fill up my palette much quicker because I'm, I'm mixing a lot and I'm mixing it big for you. Um, I'm going to move these colors over here and uh, move this off to the side so I can paint a little bit. So did everybody have that? Everybody get that? You saw the mixes? Okay. All right, now what I'm gonna do, and I don't know if I'm gonna be able to stick to it because, um, you know, I can get lost in the sauce when I'm painting, but I'm gonna try to make each one have a different dominance. Like one, I'm gonna try to have more of that ochre dominance, another one redder, another one more gray blue, and then maybe a greeny with just touches of the other pure colors. 
so that you can see that you can really, really get a lot of different effects and a lot of different kinds of paintings, depending on, you know, what palette you enjoy. Okay, so um, did anybody new join us that I didn't say hello to? Hi, Donna. Okay, how much time do we have? Oh, yeah, okay, we got a lot of time. All right. Um, I wanted to show you these too because these are some of some of uh, the cards that I made. Um, this is this is the orange, okay, or the red. Just adding white. All right, which is always fun to do. Hi, Sharon. Um, this is the ochre. Just adding white. No other colors. Okay, this is the Payne's gray. Just adding white and no other colors. Okay, so that's a that's a big palette. And then um, this is I don't know if I have all of them. This was the orange or the cad red light and Payne's gray, and then you get all these different degrees of these brownish colors, and then you can add white to all of these. So it, it can get really, really wide. Um, here's where I added Payne's gray to the yellow, no white, okay? Just the yellow and the Payne's gray. And you can see all these beautiful uh, muted greens. So if you have trouble with your greens, you know, and you wanna scale them back a little bit, green can really steal the show and it can really mess you up. So, uh, Thanks, Vince. Um, I, I love to play with color. I really do. And then this is taking some of these and then adding white to them, some of the neutrals that I mixed. Look at this. See, <laughs> I think this is so exciting. Oh, I might want to go do a happy dance. See? And that's just, the you know, getting that neutral green with the yellow um, and making and adding white to it. So, and then these are other ones where I mixed a little bit of the orange and the yellow and got a more of an orange um, and then started to add white to that, okay? But it can, it can, it can go on and on and on. It, it's, you know, almost infinite. The other thing I wanted to quickly show you, and this is the same thing. I think I already showed you this, these brownie colors, but... Again, um, what you can't do is you can't really get a good purple. You can't get a good purple. So if you really, really want to add a purple at some point, then you need to introduce, okay, um, and I only have it in this, like a Quin magenta, all right, a quinacridone magenta, and um, you go back to your primary blue, which is ultramarine blue. Okay, because these are those are primary colors, primary palette, okay, and this, and you can get a really, really beautiful purple. But you cannot get a purple with that warm orange <clears throat> and the blue that they gave me. All right, it just gets really dark, okay? So um, that's that. And if you were to just change your yellow or just your red in this whole mix, it would look entirely different again. So, you know, it's really exciting, but we'll stick to these for now. And, um, you know, I'll just put a little bit on the paper for you so you can see what happens. Um, and forgive me, I'm not gonna worry about design and stuff. I just want you to see, um, what I want you to see is color relationships, meaning that if I put a really warm color, like I get that yellow, even though I don't really have a blue, and I put it next to the, the mixed panes gray, which I'll need to use a different brush for, or even if this was a black. Uh, the yellow looks really warm and the um, gray looks really blue. 
so we'll go down and look at it. Do you see that? Okay, I think you can see that. It's weird, I had to pull it toward me. So anyway, I think with this one, maybe what I'll do is make it um, maybe a mostly bluish uh, piece, a dark piece, and um, or Payne's gray piece. And um, just to show you what it looks like together, it might just be this surrounding that square. Um, but do you see how different it gets when it's surrounded by that? So that really, really changes everything. And if I were to add the brown in there that we made with the red and the blue, then I have something very, very different once again. Okay, something very different. This is a dirty brush now, so what happens is I'm just gonna start getting greens and I'm starting to mix on the page because I'm not cleaning my brush, all right? But I want you to see, you know, different dominances. So if I were to do a painting that I had a little bit of yellow in and a lot of the cool and muted colors, you know, that's how the yellow would scream. Um, if I wanted to, um, once it dries, you know, add some of the other lights and stuff, but I'm just gonna put this on wet, okay? And, and get the white in there and mix it. Then I'll get something else that will start happening, okay? But they all look really nice together. So this is kind of a, a sophisticated look. If I want to go for something that is, you know, warmer and prettier, uh, not prettier, I think this is pretty too. It just depends how much yellow you use or how much of the other. And I add my white. Then I'm gonna get a very peachy, peachy pink. And a little bit of yellow. And kind of keep that that blue gray out of there for most of it. I'm, I'm gonna get a warm dominant piece. All right, ooh, bad boy, bad boy. Um, and I could even put in a really warm, warm green in this that will still keep it warm dominant. Okay, and we got our green by mixing our Payne's gray with that yellow ochre. So that makes it a little bit greener, but it's still, it's still warm. You see it? It's still all warm. Okay, so it's predominantly warm palette. That blue right there is gonna end up doing all the talking, okay? And that's why you have to be careful. If you're gonna make it a warm dominant and you start to introduce another color, like a cooler color, like if I mix my, just my Payne's Gray with white, okay, and I think this is a little dirty, then that's gonna look very cool. See it? If I want to change the value, that means I'll make it darker, I have to add more Payne's Gray to that to make it darker. But you can see the difference. Look at the yellow here, as opposed to the yellow there. It all depends on what it's next to. Right there, it's very, very bright. Here, when it's surrounded by colorful neutrals, it starts to recede. Even if I were to go in and, um, you know, use it, use it full strength, that yellow ochre, um, it's still, going to be subtle unless I put it smack dab in the middle of something like this. And that's dirty, but I think you get my point. I just got to blob it on. 
All right, so here it looks very warm. Here it blends, and this looks very cool, okay? Does that make sense? All right. So now I wanna do a predominantly yellow piece, and I think what I'll do is I'll I'll use my yellow, this is sort of daring, right out of the tube, and I'm gonna make that my underlying color, all right? So I'm gonna put everything on top of that, and that, that, that can get really messy. I'm gonna add a little water to it. So I'm gonna start with yellow, and this is what you call mixing on the page, and not on the palette. Now, because I put the extender in, I kind of shot myself in the foot for the video because it makes the paint stay wet longer. So that's what's throwing me off. I, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty good with timing as to when the paint can take another coat of paint, but I'm gonna make this whole thing yellow and then I'm gonna wait for a second. And let me see, I think, well, maybe I'll add some, I'll make a green right on top of all this. Let me see. Okay, so if I use my paints gray directly and mix it in here, okay, do you see that? And mix it in here. The, it's picking up the yellow which is giving me that green, okay, mixing on the palette. Um, if I get the, the red and put it on there straight without adding white, then you'll see a much more orangey color. And when I put it next to that, this blue, I'm gonna to start to get some kind of a cool looking green. So this is what I'm, this is how I mix on the page when I'm painting along. And I generally do that once I know my palette. And if I don't know my palette, I learn it really quick this way, okay? So if I want to add more yellow, Or if I want to add white to lighten all this up, we can get a peachy color on a page because the paint is still wet underneath it, right? But it's still picking up the yellow. Do you see that? Picking up that yellow underneath there. So it's picking up the yellow. So this is what you call color comparison. If I put that directly on that yellow again, do you see how much more blue that looks next to the yellow than it does next to the orange? How it changes it, but it's really exactly the same color. And then if I put that same blue on top of this, that's a whole different look, all right? And then if I put it on top of this, which has some of the yellow coming through, then that's still another look, okay? So these are just some options that you have with this. and I can go on and on and on. But that's pretty much pure mixing and color comparison. When you put one color next to another, what happens? So um, I hope you learned something with that. Um, the other thing that I, I think I would like to show you is um, if you want, 
again, um, if you change your yellow or your red, you're going to get entirely different colors. But these three colors plus black and white or when you use the paints gray, you don't need to do that, um, can make, you know, quite a quite a interesting palette um, as I've shown you. So beautiful, beautiful, sophisticated colors. So now, if you want to get a purple, all right, because everybody knows that purple and yellow look nice together. You want to be able to do something like this you got to add a blue, okay? And you have to change your red to a cooler red, which would be slight, a little bit further to the right on a color wheel toward blue, okay? So that would be a cooler red. And then you can get, as you see, this is full strength, this is full strength blue, and then I get all these varying degrees. Let me see if I can turn my light this way. I'm going to turn another light on. Of purple. So I'm going to mix that purple, I think, and this is what it looks like when you start adding white to it. Okay, so you have all of that. And you can make a really pretty subtle painting with all these colors like this and it just depends on you know what degree of intensity you want intensity is the amount of pure pigment to white okay if it's right out of the tube you get those really intense colors so i i like making these little strips i'm not a real scientific painter but if I'm mixing up colors that I'm not used to, like the ones that they sent me, um, I um, I might do that. Otherwise, I, I make a lot of mud, a lot of mud. So, like I said, don't be afraid to go into the mud. Uh, what I will do is um, right here on my page, I want to uh, put a little bit of the ultramarine blue. I'll just mix it on the page for you. And... Um, a little bit of the quinacridone magenta. And I will put that other red out so that you can see that there's just no way, no how that that's going to happen. But I'll do it after I mix this a little bit. And I'm, I'm going to use a smaller brush so I don't make a mess here. So here we go. And then I might add some white to it so you can see some tones and tints. Or even the Payne's Gray. Uh, can get really, really nice, deep um, burgundy and things like that. So here we go. You see it? I can see that? Okay. Okay, so if I mix this with this, I can get a really nice purple. I'm going to put some water in it so you can sort of see it. Uh, and I mean, you know, you, you can buy this purple, but if you really want to control whether you have like a really deep dioxamine purple and, or you have a red purple, you, it, it all depends on how much, you know, you can control that or a burgundy, you can control that. So I would say, you know, mix your purples. Um, because then you can decide uh, which way you want to go with those. Um, and then adding whites to them, you know, it's just gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. And I, you might be able to get this out of a tube, but um, I'm going to clean that off. But I like, you know, making color discoveries that I can't necessarily find.
And it's not that they haven't been done, because they've certainly been done. All right, so that's a really beautiful violet. Very, very different. You see how very different these are? This violet is very different from that. All right. And this already has a little bit of the blue in it. So it's almost all magenta, but it has a little bit of blue in it. So depending on how much white I add to that, I can get a really nice pinky color. I know you hear my I'm a rapid brush washer, especially when I'm doing a video. Um, what was I going to show you? Oh, I was going to show you what happens when you can add a little Payne's Gray, which is a form of blue, to your magenta, right? But it'll give you a really, really, really deeper, but different kind of a purple yet. Okay. And you can start to really see that when you when you add white to it. So it's a little bit different than the other ones. Very slight, but so you can just add this to your mix, all right, and still have your paints gray as your blue, all right, and get those colors. And then the last thing I was going to do is just show you why. You know, even even if you get um, regular cadmium red, and, and you and you get uh, blue, you're you're gonna struggle with you know your purples. Um, here's the red. That's not pure. So let me get the pure red. Okay, so here's the pure red. All right, I'll take it over to the blue and you mix it with the blue. You're going to get more of a green than a purple because there's just too much yellow in the red. So it's not a terrible color, but it ain't purple and it's never going to be purple. Okay, because I've tried that and I've tried it with all different CAD reds, but it's not going to happen. Okay. Capiche? Okay, so I hope that that helped you to a certain degree and also um, let you see how the um, Liquitex Basics behave. Um, I'm not a rep for them. Um, I'm not an influencer for them. They just sent me the gift and asked me if I would do um, some demos and what have you, you know, in exchange for the gift. And I don't know. I did it because it's Liquitex. <laughs> it's paint. So uh, it, again, it's what I have to say is Liquitex products are great. We all know that. Um, uh, the um, professional brand is pricey if that's an issue and you need to use a lot of paint. Um, and the... Um, basics behave very well. So that's just a matter of, you know, your choice. And, you know, we all have these little subtle things uh, about color that we um, pick up in our eye. So that, that's really your call. But, you know, so here's all the colors that, that we made today. And uh, you can see the comparisons and what could happen. And um, what I didn't do with these is put a lot of white, just white by itself or black, that dark blue, make a black. I can make a really good black with the red. Um, so that will give you different value shifts and stuff like that. So um, I just really hope that that helped you out. And thanks for watching. And uh, it's really nice painting with you. 
And I love to see if you do any paintings uh, with this, uh, paint them and, and post them to maybe the hashtag stir crazy underscore stir crazy cafe. What is it? Stir crazy underscore cafe. Um, or Paputinsky or get your cray cray on. Any of those will work. And, um, and maybe we can share them to our stories. Okay. Cause I, I'd like to see what you do. Okay. And, uh, it doesn't have to do any, have to do anything with me. Um, I, I just really want to freely get on here and share with you some info and, um, you know, give it a little boost and, um, you know, freely I've been given truly so freely I'm um, given to you and Sharon. So remember the Lord bless you and keep you may make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May he lift up his countenance upon you and give you in these times, his peace. Love you. Don't forget, it's just paint. Nobody dies. Bye.